Okay guys, welcome to another episode of Why I Love. Uh, now I'm really surprised I haven't actually featured this game yet. This is uh, International Soccer, released by Commodore in 1983. Now, uh, <coughs> back in the early days when the C64 was first released, they did actually release their own software. Um, and I think most of the games that they released were on cartridge. This being one of them. Now, I got my C64, I'm trying to think when it would be, it was probably mid-1983, and uh, I'd got a couple of games, um, I mean, I got a couple of games that I ordered, uh, in fact, no, I bought them, I bought, did buy them in a, a computer shop, and they weren't the greatest, and like a lot of people, you know, back then, we, you know, we didn't have the internet, whatever, it was magazines, uh, computer and video games. Now, I happened to see... Um, read a review of this very game. In fact, I'll see if I can find it and put a wee link uh, up above. Uh, I read a review of the game, and it just it literally blew my mind. It just looked incredible. You know, you have to, you've got to try and understand that this was way, way back, right at the very, very birth of this uh, this hobby of ours, and this game just looked. It just looked incredible. It really, really did. Um, the, you know, so <laughs> I went up to my local. Uh, what did I buy? About I got it and I think it was John Menzies um, in Livingston. It was on cartridge, and I said, you know, instant loading. Um, it was just, it was like the future. So I bought this game, uh, and <laughs> it literally, it literally consumed probably. I reckon it probably consumed the best part of about a year of my life. Um, I just I played it every single day. Um, I mean, I've got a diary that I kept back then, and I've read the diary a few times recently. And I don't think there's like a day that goes by in 1983 after I got it that I never played it. I just played it non-stop. My mates used to, you know, come up and play it, but it was primarily on the. Uh, one player game, you know, you had nine levels, so anyway, like, I'm going to sort of stop talking for a second and try and, uh, try and get this thing actually going. Right, how do we go, how do we change, uh, right, there's the levels, let's, let's just start off with, uh, go for level three to begin with, now you can change the colour, what I used to do is go for two really, uh, distinct or different colours so that it's quite easy to actually differentiate between players. Yeah, you know, this <laughs> seeing the players running down the pitch, it was it was hard to believe that this was actually running on a computer, on my computer. You know, the games I had that had gone before were really, really, really basic looking. And this thing just looked looked and played Amazingly, you know, it really was. If it's cutting edge, and I know it's, it's probably hard to kind of understand just what I'm trying to get at here. But you know, back in 1983, this was an astonishing game. I mean, even now, it still plays really well. The AI, obviously, of the sort of lower levels, isn't the greatest. Now, I'm sure the best way to score was to shoot diagonally. Oops, off the post. You can't, uh, you can't, you know, put any strength in the ball. We just kick it. It's only got one sort of like kick. I mean, obviously later games you could increase the power. The one thing you oops, a daisy, I just lost the ball. One thing you could do is walk the ball into net on the lower levels, which was never really a good idea because it's kind of cheating. Uh, come on. Now there's no such thing as. There's no such thing as tackling in this game. You basically just walk up to a player and you try and take the ball off him. Oops, I thought I was going to save that there. Now there's one trick I'm going to try and demonstrate in a second. Let me pass. Oh, that's too much. That was a bit silly. I could have just kept kept running the ball myself. Yeah, 
just a wee pass to him. Oops, on my head. But the graphics might look uh, blocky, but the actual animation. Let's see if I can make him for something to dive. <laughs> there we go. The crowd is always quite bizarre looking. I can never quite figure out what they were. Is that like pictures of faces with scarves or something? I'm not quite sure. But playing it in two player mode as well was absolutely fantastic, especially when you got somebody who was kind of the same level as you. You know, it was super, uh, super. How do you call it? Competitive. I mean, obviously, there's you know, there's been bigger and better games, football games released for C64. I mean, probably my favourite Commodore 64 football game would have to be Emily Hughes Soccer, which I have done a, a review of. In fact, I'll put a wee link to it up above, um, which is it borrows quite heavily from this game, but it adds extra things. You can sort of like shoot in different directions. There's uh, you can tackle, you can change the names. Of Excuse me, names of teams, etc. You can also uh, you can also change actually the power of when you're taking a shot, and it's half time. But yeah, it's just it's it's hard to really describe just how it felt playing this game for the first time. You know, you need to understand the games that I had were the most basic things ever, and this was just like wow, you know, on a cartridge. It was like futuristic. <laughs> it really was. It was just an incredible game. I mean, it's probably one of the games that I've played more, most out of probably any game ever. I probably played it, you know, a couple of hours every single day for about a year. I mean, it was just an insane the amount of time that I played it. But that was just testament to just how good a game it was. Okay, let's see how can we can we put it on to a different level. In fact, you know what? We'll just let the we'll let it run down. I'm sure on the, the C64 you pressed the, the, was it the restore button. I think it was. Oh, is he going to score? No, oh, that's a free kick. Not a free kick. It's a goal kick. Now this is the game was released in '83 by Commodore and Cartage, and then funnily enough, it was actually released. Uh, when was it released? It was released about maybe another four years later by CRL. It was exactly the same game. They hadn't done anything to it at all. But the fact that you could re-release a game, what I don't know, four years later, was just an indication of just how good this game was at the time. Let's try and take a shot. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, no. So because it's quite, no, oh. because it's quite low AI in this one. This is level three. They do have a habit of kind of just walking the ball out. <laughs> His theatrical dive. Now Andrew Spencer did go on to make a... Uh, did he? I think he made... Yeah, he made a, a tennis game, which I never actually played, but he also made a basketball game, which was again was excellent. It used the same sort of graphics, same quite sedate pace, but really playable. Probably the best uh, basketball game actually for the C64. Come on, let's try again. Oops. Right, let's try that trick. Now, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller here, so it might not work. Hey, there you go, you can just flick the ball, and then it bounces on your head. Right, let's just take a shot. <laughs> he forces the save, in fact, he didn't force the save. He tried to save it even though it was going wide. But yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting the fact that uh, 
Commodore made games to begin with and then they didn't after a while, I wonder what the reason for that was. I suppose in the early days they were, you know, to try and... How did I miss that? Um, yeah, I suppose in the early days when there wasn't that many sort of software houses making games, then they figured they'd make their own, but obviously we know that in time there was an absolute phenomenal number of games to the, the Commodore. Right, 12 seconds, let's see if we can get a quick goal. Uh, I'm going to run out of time here. And it's all over. It was obviously incredibly satisfying when you you know beat level nine. I used to be able to beat regular level nine with some pretty good regularity, but saying that they would sometimes beat me as well. They do put up quite a good quite a good fight. And the lovely wee bit of this is after the game, if there's a winner, they'll get the team, the winning team, coming back out. So there was how many players? Seven players. And you get somebody gliding down on wheels to present the cup. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It looks dated now, guys. Um, but it still plays nicely. You know, it's no Pro Evolution Soccer or Sensi Soccer or anything like that. But you need to just try and appreciate this was 1983. This was before really any... You know, most of the software back in 1983 was absolutely diabolical, and to get a game of this quality that looked this good, that played this good, um, with different skill levels and on cartridge with instant loading, it was just an absolute dream come true, and it really showed me just what computers were capable of, and you know, um, and that is why I still play video games some 40 odd years later. Yep. Anyway, listen guys, that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, and as usual, thank you very much for watching.